Ripley has existed since Norman times and the Church of St Mary Magdalene shows construction of circa 1160. The village also includes a coaching inn, the Talbot Inn, which dates back to 1453, fine dining restaurants and coffee bars for pre and post walk refreshment. The walk starts at Ripley Green which is just off the High Street. There is usually ample parking here. We head off a laneway with the cricket club on one side and the children's play area on the other. At the end of the laneway we will have passed a sign that says Dunsborough Park and Ripley Green and then reach a gate. But the path we need is on the left hand side and flagged with a public footpath sign. At the lock, the River Way and the Way Navigation separate. The Way Navigation was constructed in the 1650s by Sir Peter Weston, who was an engineer in the fledgling science of waterway construction. The canal was built to ensure gunpowder, fl flour, coal and timber could be shipped all year round to London from Guildford. Without it, barges often found the River Way impassable. As we approach Warsham Lock, we head off to the left. The footpath heads off in a southwesterly direction for you, those of you with a compass. And leads eventually to Guildford. And then on to Shalford. Fishing is allowed along the way navigation, but the, lease, the rights have been leased to several angling clubs along the way. So I've passed Warsham Lock and the, uh, the way navigation is meandering its way to uh, Newark Priory. Uh, and as, as is my luck, I've come across Brian who's a keen angler. Uh, and he's going to answer just a few, kindly answer just a few questions for us to f put in some background to the way navigation, especially the coarse fish here and the uh, wild birds. So Brian, what sort of uh, fish are you after here? At the moment I'm after chub, although there are bream, carp, um, I think there is the odd tench, but it's mainly uh, chub, bream, it's roach in the summer. Um, it's a nice stretch, it's quite deep as well. Um, and up, upstream we've got the Priory and the, the river splits and goes round to several back streams. Okay, and you were saying that, uh, if I picked you up correctly earlier, that uh, there was actually a, a sort of fish farm up, up towards Woking Palace, Did, yeah. is that what you said? Yeah, up, up, upstream of the Priory there's um, Papercourt Lock and out the back is um, Woking Palace, which dates back quite a few years, and there's, there's still the moat that sits there, and they used to um, farm carp and that for the uh, palace and pro probably the abbey. So that is probably how the carp got into the river um, through flooding and things like that. But uh, they're all pretty much fully established and native for uh, several hundred years. And you were saying that uh, the, it's most, mostly indi indigenous species in the river here, but it is further up towards Guildford, if I heard you correctly, contaminated in some ways? Yeah, I mean, further upstream, it, the, the river's riddled with uh, red signal crayfish, imports from America in the 70s and that, which have all escaped across several south, southern rivers. and. Um, but saying that they do, you know, the, the native species like bream and carp and chub do actually feed on them and uh, they do quite well. And, and uh, lastly, you flabbergasted me by t started talking about bird life, bird life. Would you like to talk about some of the bird life that you mentioned? Yeah, I've, I've just uh, half a mile up river on the Papercourt Meadow, there's, um, you can see barn owls in the evening moving around. Um, several times I've seen the peregrine falcons from the tower blocks at Woking sitting out on the uh, on the electricity pylons in the morning and things like that. Um, yeah, there, there's what's there's Egyptian geese out there at the moment. Um, okay, Brian, I can th I can thank you a thousand times for that. A really really concise 
adaption or story to the uh, to the way navigation. Thank you so much, and I wish you some really successful days fishing. After following the meandering way navigation through the marshes and meadows, we come to Newark Lock, Newark Lock. And at Newark Lock, we cross the river to the footpath on the other side. And in front of us is a lovely view to the uh, ruins of the Newark Priory. Look out a bit further on for the plaque that describes the history, not only of the Priory, which was built in 1180, but also the mill house that unfortunately was destroyed by fire. We now come to the end of this stretch of the towpath as we approach Newark Lane and the bridge. We cross over the bridge and rejoin the towpath again on the far side. On the site of the old mill house at uh, Newark Lane, look out for the display of hay collecting uh, machinery agricultural machinery that's in the car park next to the uh, next to the river. On reaching Papercourt Lock we cross the bridge to rejoin the towpath on the other side. Apparently Papercourt Lock was rebuilt in 1907 and the same family have been lock keepers here for generations. At the very next bridge we cross the uh, way navigation again. Having crossed the bridge, we turn down Tannery Lane, leaving the business park behind us. Just after Brooks Lane, you will see a public footpath sign on your right hand side, which takes us around the edge of a field. This is well where we need to go. With the pond on our right, we have an option to turn left, but in fact we carry on straight. And a hundred yards or so from the pond, the footpath takes us to the left. In following the path, we originally had the fields on our left. They disappeared for a short while with housing on the right. And then after the housing, there were some allotments on the left. All the time we've been heading east, for those of you with a compass. At the end of the path, we turn right, go out onto the road, where we turn right again, and very quickly look, very shortly afterwards, look for a footpath on our left. Again, using our compass, I've double checked and we are heading northeast at this stage. So the uh, lake should very soon be on our left. I'm now walking along the, uh, the edge of uh, Paper Court Lake. Unfortunately, there's no uh, dinghies out today, but then for the dinghy sailors, it's probably better because there's hardly any breeze whatsoever. The lake is quite large and uh, like all the other lakes around here, has lots of wildlife. It's very tranquil, the birds are chirping and hardly seen a person at all. At the head of the lake, I look for a footpath on the right, just a very short distance, literally 15, 20 yards from Newark Lane, which I take and then return to Ripley. We are now on the main road, but the uh, footpath is uh, quite wide, so hopefully we're quite safe. As we come into Ripley, the green is on our left. And it's here I follow the public footpath sign across the recreational area to where we started by the cricket club.